going to continue the series. I'm, I'm going to continue our series called Hot Button Issues today. Uh, how are you? How many of you all are? Are you glad that we're talking about this stuff? Like for real, talking about some serious, some serious stuff here. Let's let's see. So last week we talked about mental illness. You gotta go watch the message. I'm not here to uh, run that back again. I really hope that you all, all of us, are really like you know. Let's listen to the messages throughout the week. That'll help you get by a lot of things. It gives you fresh reminders. This is why good YouTube and stuff is, because you can listen and you can and and, and there be something may new become. You know, I listen to my messages all the time and I get new things and revelations out of it that I didn't see before. And so I, I really hope that you do that because again, it's a constant process of again your relationship and your walk with Christ. It is not a Sunday thing. I'm not a Sunday Christian. I'm an everyday Christian. And I'm trying to get this thing right. Amen. Through Christ. All right. So a hot button again. The purpose of this message series is to address controversial issues that we are facing in our culture from uh, a biblical point of view. We want to hear what God has to say about these issues in order that we may be informed and again lead the conversations. Again, our conversations are changing. Like you got to there's man. Some of us with kids got to have early conversations with them so they can understand certain things. And, and kids can't even really be kids anymore because you, you got to talk to them about stuff. They can't be kids. They're growing up faster because of uh, media and different things that are being infiltrated in the media. So we have to be able to know what to say. And also we have friends who deal with different things as well. And we have to know what to say to them. Okay. Also hot button issues. What are those? They are emotional and usually controversial issues or concerns that trigger immediate intense reaction so again some of the topics that we'll be talking about is abortion sexuality racism mental illness and lastly we'll be talking about truth because that's another thing uh that is a hot button issue that many people don't want you telling them that there is an absolute truth um people believe that truth is subjective uh and what uh, what christianity has to offer is we're telling you we're pretty much blatantly saying to you that we have the absolute truth and so people don't feel that way. Well, that's true. I like that. I like this. And I like that. But the really, the real thing of the matter is, is that they do not offer, no other religion offers what Christianity has to offer. Here's the other thing about, here's the other thing about it. In, 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 Muslim, in, the, in the Muslim faith, there is no way that your salvation can be secured. Because you always have to do deeds and hopefully that the God of the, uh, of the Muslim faith, Allah, allows you to get in. So how, how you're never going to live up to even those standards. You go to Hindu faith and those things like that, there are other things. You don't know what turn into an animal in the next life. I don't know if I'm going to go off of that. You know, I, I'm a human. I, I was born a human. I don't think you're going to just, you know, slip and you're going to be a dove. You know what I mean? I, I, I just don't see that. But I'm saying Christianity offers you something that no one else can offer you, and that's eternal life. All right. So tonight I want to talk. And so by the end of this message, we're going to equip you so that you may be able to have these conversations in love, grace, and biblical truth. And again, a lot of times we like to address these things, but we don't address it in grace and love and, and address it in truth. So today we're going to talk about a, 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 a touchy topic in our culture. Today we're going to talk about abortion. Right. We're going to talk about abortion tonight. Now listen to me. My goal tonight is not to condemn those who have already committed abortions. That is not my job today. My job is not to condemn you if you already had one. My job is not tonight. I don't come with the intentions of taking a party side as far as women rights uh, let me first of all say I believe women should be paid equally especially if they're doing the same job I do believe in all that stuff but here it is not a woman's right issue more than it is a humanity issue all right it's a humanity right and that's what I, that's what I'm talking about today uh, I believe again 
and women's rights and I believe there are certain things but again when you have feminist groups who are on the very extreme of things we have to be able to uh, again address stuff not based upon a party line but let's separate it all and let's get down to the bottom line of things because I'm not here I'm not a Republican I'm not a Democrat I don't represent any of any one of those parties nor do I influence you and whatever your beliefs is uh, uh, politically that's not my job my job is to give you the divine order of God and that's what anybody's job should do. Anybody's job should give you the divine order of God and allow you to make the decision based upon uh, what has been laid out. So that's that's what my job is. Also, my job is tonight is to appeal to those who uh, who are contemplating having an abortion. I want to talk to you tonight, and just want to talk to you. Also, most importantly, I want you to give give you what God has to say about this issue. Because some people say that God really doesn't say much about this issue, but there are things that the Bible alludes to that talk specifically about child sacrifice um, and about murder and about the shedding of innocent blood. <clears throat> and the shedding of innocent blood, which we have to be careful of. Now, let me also state off, start off by saying I do not agree with some of uh, of the laws that are very extreme when it comes down to abortion, uh, with sp especially with abo uh, abolishing abortion, especially when a mother is on the bed and having to make a decision for her life, and then you're going to tell her you're going to go into jail because she chose her life. I think that's kind of extreme. Uh, when you get when you get into those uh, those those waters can be a little uh, muddy, and you and, and and I believe a woman has a, the right uh, and the husband as well to see what is going to be the result of that situation when a woman is pregnant and there's different there's difficulties within the pre there's difficulties uh with the delivery and the woman could lose their life and the baby could lose their life and you got to choose one so those are instances that that happens and i don't believe that uh you should there should be strict laws to send somebody to uh, jail because of that now i will say that uh but but again uh, i want to give you the premise of uh what transformation believes and we don't uh, we do not condone abortions. That is not something that we condone, but we want to be able to help guide you uh, if, if, you, if you're in trouble and different things like that so we can lead you uh, to making the, the uh, right decision. How about that? Amen. All right. And if you know somebody who's contemplating doing that, this can help to talk to them. Um, I want to talk to you. Uh, 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 I want to talk to you from the subject. Let me live. Let me let me live. Let me live. Uh, let me first of all start by saying that abortion is not a new issue uh, with our um, in the United States. It's not. It is a long-standing issue that has been a long-standing issue within our country for many years, uh, ever since our forefathers. Actually, matter of fact, in 1973 there was a uh, Roe versus Wade, and this was the Supreme Court's decision in a 7-2 decision to affirm uh, the legality of a woman's right to have an abortion under the 14th Amendment. The majority of the reason why this became law, because according to Planned Parenthood website, uh, again, I'm not here, I'm gonna give you it from both sides of the coin, um, but according to their website, in 1965, illegal abortions made up one sixth of all pregnancy deaths. Again, we can even trace this issue again back to our forefathers, because according to an article I was reading in the New York Times, uh, by a name uh, by a guy named uh, John Irvin, who was giving his opinion uh, concerning this issue, he, uh, and his article was the long, cruel history of anti-abortion crusade. He says that prior to the uh, prior to the 1840s, abortion was widespread and not I illegal in our country. In the time of the Puritans, America's deeply religious founding fathers, abortion was allowed until the fetus was quick. Um, and when, and in other words, that says is when the woman could feel the fetus moving. So it was allowed. Uh, uh, it was allowed until they could feel the fetus moving. All right. So once the fetus started moving, then they did not allow abortion. But then 1973 came along, and then Roe versus Wade get passed. 7-2 decision that made it uh, uh, illegal, and then that is what uh, made it so that there could, uh, so that uh, abortions could be done in a more safer way, they say. Um, but there's still a shedding of someone's life. Yeah. So no matter how, okay, again, it's good that the woman is in better condition and there's no deaths happening, but there is a death still happening. 
and that is with the child. Amen. Here are some of the statistics of abortion, if you don't mind. From 1973 from 2011, can you see that? Uh, from 1973 through 2011, nearly 53 million legal abortions, uh, 53 uh, million legal abortions occurred in the United States. Among married women, 4% of pregnancies currently end in abortion. Among unmarried women, 27% of uh, pregnancies end in abortion. Women in their 20s accounted for the majority of abortions in 2015 and had the highest abortion rates. Adolescents under 15 years old obtained 0.03% of all 2015 abortions. Women aged 15 to 19 years accounted for less than 10%. Reasons why, matter of fact, put it in the playlist. That's going to help me. So reasons why, uh, reasons why a person, um, well, let me give you arguments for abortion. So one of the arguments for abortion in support uh, for abortion is that it protects women's uh, product, reproductive rights. In other words, it is giving control to the woman to make a decision what she is going to do with her own body. OK, uh, and again, a lot of women's rights groups say no, there should be no man making laws to tell a woman what not to do. That is what they're saying, from, uh, telling women not to do with their body. That is the idea of protecting the woman's reproductive rights. Another argument for abortion is reproductive choice protects women from financial disadvantage. 42% of women having abortions are below the federal poverty line. So another reason why uh, arguments for abortion is, is that a lot of uh, the abortions that are, uh, a lot of the people that are getting pregnant uh, are, are really below the poverty line. So again, it protects them from uh, uh, that disadvantage, okay? All right, now banning abortion puts women at risk by forcing them to use illegal abortionists. So another reason why someone may uh, support abortion is because again, having and making it legal to, for abortion uh, begins to protect those uh, from going to uh, 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 abortion uh, or using doctors to, to, to do, a, well not using doctors, but really to use any old body who say they can do it, and then it's unsafe. So that's another reason why, because the idea is, again, even with Roe versus Wade, the reason why that got approved is because a lot of the, the, the uh, abortion techniques that were used were really bad and harmful. Uh, it had an extreme uh, effect on the mother as well. And so again, a lot of deaths were caused through that. And so again, what happens, here's what happens in America, in our system. When something gets a little too out of hand, then they make a law for it. Yeah. So if that is becoming like the, 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 the universal thing, then we're going to just pass it through. It's the same thing like marijuana. So it's now becoming a universal thing. What have we do? Now we got laws getting in place to make it legal. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So just because, uh, uh, just because somebody passes something doesn't make it that it's the right thing to do. So because we have people of other, of other colors, I'm not going to get in that, that uses this, they're going to say, okay, we've allowed certain people to benefit off of this thing. Let's make it legal so we can make it the right way. But then we have people in jail for long years just selling a nickel. Uh, then that's a bag of weed, just a nickel on the street. And they get 20 years and only with one charge. Do you see the hypocrisy? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying selling is right, but what I'm saying is we must be truthful about it all. Yeah. Y'all feeling what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So those are arguments for abortion. Here are the reasons why. Reasons, uh, reasons, why, um, reasons why someone will have an abortion. Number one, a victim of rape. Number two, can't afford a baby. Three, not ready for a child. And the last one is don't want to be a single mother. So those are the reasons why we've seen in the study of why uh, those will commit abortion.
Now, we, now a lot of people, I, I got to talk about this. What happens, Pastor, be in a situation where there is a victim of rape? Now, a lot of times people will present that to you, um, present that to you. Now, let me tell you something. Cases like that do happen, right? Cases like that do happen. But in a report I read, uh, what, in a report I read, that uh, the instance of rape, of someone being raped, is literally less than 0.5%. That means less than 0.5%. That means the cases that those happen are really far in between. That those are not something that, is, that happens often, right? But it is something that happens. So what happens when you, what happens if you were a victim of that and, 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 and you didn't ask for that? You didn't ask for that. Somebody uh, who's demonic and evil uh, did something like that to you and you have that person's baby. What do you do? And so there's some reasons why, like, no, that she shouldn't, she shouldn't have to be able to take that person's child. She should be able to abort it because she didn't ask for that. And, and I think we get into little muddy waters with that, too, because at the end of the day, the child is literally innocent from that. Yeah. The child is innocent from that. Yeah. Now, that person is going to fire, may fire come upon that person mm -hmm. that would do something like the evil thing like that. Uh, an evil thing like that. And, no, and no, you got to be very sensitive to that. Yeah. Because again, it can be a psychological thing in both ways. If she aborts the baby, she's going to have psychological issues. Mm -hmm. But even with the baby, she can possibly continue to remember that night. Mm -hmm. So then you constantly are going back and forth. However, at least with the child, it could possibly bring joy to that person. More than harm. You would hope that it would do that and turn out that way. Because, again, the child is literally innocent of whatever happened in, in, in the conception of, uh, a, a, conception of, uh, of a human life. Yeah. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That no matter, even if, even if there was no bad thing that happened to you, the child is literally innocent even if you and, the, even if, uh, you and your baby mother or you and your baby father don't see eye to eye, the child has nothing to do with that. You get what I'm saying? And that's where we have to die, that's distinguish that. The child, literally, a child is a gift from God. Yes, it, is. Yes. it is scripture. Yes. So the child really has nothing to do in that instance. The only thing you would really hope is that you can lead that mother through a process of a deliverance to see that child as a gift from God yes. and not that child as a gift of Satan. Yes. Amen. That's all you can hope for. And you have to be patient with them because I'm telling you now, that's a real thing. And the church cannot bypass that and think that, oh, you just need to have. Yeah, we still want you to have a baby, but you got to lead that woman through deliverance. Because if you don't, she's going she not going to love that child the way that child needs to be loved. Because all she can do is remember that night. All right. And so those are reasons that those are reasons why somebody will choose uh, uh, to do an abortion. And here, but here, and, and, and so another one is can't afford a baby. So a lot of people are, are, are living grown, but they can't even afford it. Yeah. They living grown, can't afford a kid. Listen, I'm getting married. Even married couples, listen, if you can't afford a baby, don't have it. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm saying do what you need to do to protect yourself from having a kid. But you know what I'm saying? Like birth control, uh, whatever you have to do. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to avoid a kid, things do happen. <laughs> things do happen. But I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to, you don't abort no kid. That is not something that you do. That is wrong. It is completely wrong. And again, another thing for our young children is that we must take time to teach them, to help them understand you have no money. So because you have no money, you shouldn't be doing grown people's things because you can't afford it. All right, I'm just bringing, I'm bringing this plain as day. This is a plain, it's a straightforward message. Reality is you don't need to be doing things you can't afford. And that's period. Outside of pregnancy or anything, don't things do things you can't afford. Lastly, don't want to be a single mother. Don't want to necessarily be a single mother. She, uh, the person... The young woman thought that this man was going to be with them, with her forever. They get a kid, and then he, he's gone. Yeah. 
So it's like, I don't want to be doing this alone. So what I do is I'm going to abort the kid because I'm not going to be forced to do this by myself. Now, listen to me. Those reasons towards the end, uh, uh, except out of a uh, victim of rape, those last three reasons are all based on convenience. Yeah. The majority reason, and this is polled higher than anything, all right? The majority reason why a person has an abortion is based on convenience. Yeah. That's what all of this is about. Yeah. Because you were doing something that has the potential to inconvenience you, and you didn't care about the consequences, and That's you didn't right. think that it could happen to you, it's now happened, and now you're trying to get an escape plan out of it, and so here's what you do. I'm going to do what my decision is. Let me go and abort the baby. Then you have those who are contemplating abortion even right now because somebody may be whispering in their ear, hey, I ain't ready to be a dad. Hey, I don't want to do that. No, go ahead and get an abortion. All right? Because, again, it's inconvenience. You are inconveniencing me, but you were not inconvenient. I wasn't an inconvenience to you when we was doing the do. But now you want to, you want an escape route. You want an escape plan. And so you got people whispering in their ear, have an abortion. No, you need to abort that baby. Also, we've had people also who are believers who have led their children to have abortions as well. Because you're not going to inconvenience me, and I'm not going to raise another kid. That has happened. We've had pastor daughters literally had abortions. Why? Because the pastor didn't want to look bad among the family. So what you do? Let's abort the kid and let's keep it under the, let's keep it under the wraps. But then get on the but then get on the stage, and then I'm going to preach about abortion is wrong. It, it, it's a real thing. Yes, it but here's where the biggest issue is that everyone has in all of this. The biggest argument is, is when does life actually begin? Right? When does life begin? Because here's the thing. Women will go so far with saying, or people will go so far with saying when they're supporting an agenda, they don't really realize what they're really saying. And when they take their own bias out of it, right? Let's look at the facts. When does, a, when does life actually happen? Let's look at the science. Let's look at what the Bible says. But most important, before I give you the Bible, let's look at what it says scientifically. You get what I'm saying? Scientifically, human life starts at conception. The fetus is considered a child, a human already. Are you hearing me? And I will. Here's what it's going to say. Biologically, when the, woman's, uh, when the mother's egg and the father's sperm come together, they combine and create a new string of DNA. Stop right there. The moment it has DNA, a new string of DNA, that means it's something unique. That means, the, that, that means when the string of DNA has hit that kid, how all of a sudden you have a human with DNA. Oh, my God. And I'm going to go one step further. When Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And so the very fact of the matter is at conception, God already knew who that baby was going to be and the name that baby was going to be. Are you hearing me? He already knew. Woman that came, that was the sperm that was coming to hit that egg. And DNA. So again, when you have DNA, that means this is a unique thing. A unique person that is being born. So automatically, the fetus has DNA. It has DNA. And so if it has DNA, that makes it a human. Because it's already been formed with its own DNA. Everyone in here does not have the same DNA. Everyone's fingerprint is not the same. What distinguishes, distinguishes all of us is the DNA. All right. All right. That is, it is personalized and totally unique. In other words, 
Everything that God's done for you is personalized. It's unique for you. So why, if I have my own, let me, let, me, let me go off track here. Watch this. Why is it that I have a problem with comparison? When I have my own DNA, I'm already unique. God made me this way. I don't need to compare myself to anybody because God made me specifically for this day on this moment in 1993. He knew the year. I thank God he birthed me here because I couldn't do it in the civil rights movement. Amen. Hallelujah. I probably would have died. <laughs> oh, I would have been like, Lord, take me now. <laughs> Yo, la, la, la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably would have been, God, I said, ain't nobody going to be sick of me with dogs. And, oh, Martin Luther King's, oh, you know, nonviolence. I said, man. I said, oh, Martin. We're going to have to talk about that. Amen. <laughs> huh? We're going to have to talk about that. So here it is. DNA is coded information. The blueprint for the new human's growth. It is through the DNA that is then this growth is going to come out of. All right? And development. No more, gen no more genetic material needs to be added. The zygote in the womb is a human as the mother in whose womb it dwells. So, okay, let me, let, me, let me move a little further. The Bible also backs up the human life, uh, th that human life begins at the moment of conception. Uh, let me give you, uh, let me give you uh, Psalm 139, verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. You see that? Yeah. David, Psalm to David said, you formed me in my inward parts. The moment conception, God was forming you there. He put DNA in you and then allows the, oh my God, unless the biology didn't develop. So you see, God is not exempt from science. He uses it. Yes. All right. Are you hearing me? God, God created the natural order. So again, once he puts the DNA, knows exactly what it's going to be, how it's going to do what it's going to do, then he leaves it to the nature to do with the rest. But he then keeps you in the womb. All right. All right. All right. Verse 16. Let me, let me show you verse 16. Let me show you uh, uh, verse 16. My eyes are killing me. All right. Verse 16. You, you see that? It says, you, you, your eyes saw my substance being yet un, un, uh, unformed, and in your book they were all written. Watch this. It says, your eyes saw my substance. What is that? Being yet formed. Being yet unformed. So again, the baby is still being formed in the womb. But what David is saying, you saw me in my only fetus state. I was just a substance. I'll go one step further. He, he, he saw you while you were just, he saw, looked at the DNA, bam, that's where you go. I already knew who you were going to be before him. Are you hearing that? And guess what? He already written out your days. So I already had a thought towards you. Then I saw you in your, un, when you were unformed, just in your substance state. And then I already written out your days. So I already fashioned out how long you're going to live here. You cut that short by what you do. Oh, let me tell you something, everybody, God, let me tell you something. The righteous and unrighteous, God already all, God sent them into the world with an assignment. Yeah. People choose not to do it because of their own rebellion. But God already fashioned their days. You know how you cut your life short? Substance abuse. Not treating your life right. Not living righteous. That's how you cut your life short. Yeah. From the time that God, yeah, you can take yourself out of here early. People don't think it's a real thing, but it's a real thing. I'm going to come back to that. Here's some cons about this whole thing, right? There's cons about an abortion that is not good. Here it is. Women should not be able to use abortion as a form of contraception. It should not be used in that form. And that's what people do. 
oh, the condom didn't work. Well, let's go straight to the abortion. That's what people do. Yeah. And they don't understand that a lot of times it causes, again, psychological damage. Abortion eliminates the potential, here it is, uh, the, the potential societal contributions of a future human being. Listen, you don't know what's in the DNA of that child. And because I don't care, let me tell you something, even if you were the victim of rape, there is something in that child that could be a great blessing to you. And the cry of every aborted baby is, if you would have only let me live, what could I have done? What could I have done? What could I have been if you only would have let me live? How, be, how come if I only live, it could have changed your life? It could have grew you up. It, it could have came, you could have, you, you, if I only, and this is the cry of every kid, you don't know what was in me. But you aborted me. See, everybody talks about, well, the con about abortion is, uh, uh, well, the, the, the pro about abortion is, is that at least you don't have to put them in a system. But let me tell you something, because then the child in the system would feel like they were never wanted. But again, the aborted baby who, who, who was aborted early and killed early, you don't really hear their voice, well, they didn't want me. So either way, you give them up. You, you, and then those are the people, I'm talking about those who are supporting abortion, well, at least you give them uh, uh, the, the system, you, you can at least kill this and don't let them go into the system and the system is bad. Well, that's even worse. That, that's not worse than killing a kid that had potential. Because again, you still, even in the system, a kid still got a chance to rise bu uh, above, to rise be above the, the cards that were stacked against them. You don't understand that some of your greatest people had a lot of controversy and a lot of things they had to go through before they got there. All right, I I'm coming, I'm coming. The reality is, is, ladies and gentlemen, if you would only let the child live, what could they have done? What could they have been? They could have changed the whole family structure in your home. But because of your selfishness, because that's what it comes down to. Don't give me a thing about women's rights, men's rights, men telling women. It's not about that. Stop muddy in the waters. It's about that as a human being. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Uh, you don't, uh, we don't approve of children being killed who are already living. So why do we approve children being killed with before they even get a chance to live? Come on, somebody. Either way, the child is getting robbed. It's not a, outside of that. It's called that. Let me tell you. Look, I, I, if I was grown enough to do it, now I got to be grown enough to handle my decisions. And here's what we tell people. Here's what we tell people. We are telling people by saying that it is okay, you can do that. We're telling them is that you cannot live with the consequences. That there is none because you can get rid of it. And that's not true. Some things you got to walk through and live through. And guess what? It made you a better person. It made you a better person because I lived through it. I lived through it and I made it out of it. And God kept me through it. And God sustained me through it. So for that woman who's contemplating abortion, let the child live. Give him a chance. Give him or her a chance. They, 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 they have something on their life. They have something that can contribute to society. Are you hearing me? So let me, let me give you a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind about this issue. One, abortion is the killing of a human being. Murder is defined as the unlawful, premeditated killing of one human being by another. Watch this. We already established that the kid is a human being at conception. So again, murder is premeditated. It's intentional what you're doing. You already intended in your mind, I'm going to take this kid out. I don't want it. I'm going to go about my life. And everyone say, oh, medicine has gotten so much better. It don't affect the woman. 
but it's still affecting the kid. You can't murder something and murder something and don't think that they ain't going to experience it in the womb. What is that? What, 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 is, what is that? And then we have in laws that some states are passing to allow abortion all the way up to the point of delivery. There are states approving that. So you are proving now what do you have to say about a full grown human being and you about to abort it. And there's no, compl there's no complications. So a woman say, okay, at the ninth month, uh, I don't think I want this anymore. Say, for instance, they break up. They're not together. Why am I going to carry your child? I'm going to do, I'm going to do, oh my God. I'm a, and the dude looking forward to it and all of that stuff like that. And then what happens is the child aborts because I'm getting back at you. What type of mess is that? What is that? And you allow a child to be aborted all the way up to the point of, pre of delivery? That's a human being fully. So where did, so if you don't believe that human being, uh, that there's a human being in the fetus state, but then when the human's fully grown, you can see that they got hands, got a head and everything like that. You want to abort it and you allow that, but it's not murder because it has everything to do with your convenience. And why politicians don't mind because they've been doing the very thing to young girls who they've been sleeping with. And so it helps benefit them so they can still put on this image that they got it all together because they don't want to be kicked out of office that you pay them money for. Because they don't really do work anyway. All right. All right. All right. People want to cover their dirt up. Let me tell you something, no matter what you say, everything come, there's light that come. Let me tell you something, you, there's a way that God has that you can't go under. And I'm telling you now that you can do what you want to do in the dark, but God will expose you so quick and bring it out there and make you a mockery in front of everyone. The reality is it is murder. It is murder. I don't care what you have to say. It is a murder of a human being. Oh, so give me, give it. So again, that person, the baby can't talk for itself. But if he was talking, he would say, let me live. Let me have a chance. That's okay. You don't want me. That's fine. But there's somebody who do. And there are, let me tell you something. There are good things that are out here. Uh, Pastor D's mom works, I believe, for the state, right? The Archdiocese of Washington. She's done dealt with people who deal with the same things of dealing with that, and they've been helping kids get to homes that are safe and that are that are safe. And so, don't tell, don't tell me that, that don't tell me that you can't. Don't don't tell me that there's not things and organizations that are out there that can help facilitate making sure that child gets to where it needs to be. You don't want it? Okay, cool. Give us the child. And we're going to make sure that they're in the right place. All right? Here's the thing. That, our friend, is something that God despises. It's the murder and the shedding of innocent blood. Let me tell you something. There is a statistic that there is 50 million abortions that happen all around the world every year. And one of the things that God does not play with, with a nation, is the shedding of innocent blood. And one of the reasons why nations fell is because of child sacrifices. Because of the, because of the sacrifice of children, God does not play with something that is so precious to him. And God is not going to have you do things like that and think that you're going to get away with it after a while. Some of the greatest nations have fallen to their knees. Why? Because of their shedding of innocent blood like children. And then there's one person, well, God shed innocent. You don't know why God did what he did because of the wickedness of people. That's why God wiped it out. But you want to but you want to say, oh, God believes in abortion. No, he does not. Never has. Well, what about them people who were murdered, who God said kill their children and kill because of the wickedness that was all in the land. They could not stand in a place that was holy. Are you hearing me tonight? Proverbs 6, verse 16 and 17. I'll give you scripture to back it up. I believe it's there. It says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. 
a proud look, a lion tongue, and here's what, hands that shed innocent blood. I didn't say something that God don't like. I said something that he absolutely despises. It's the shedding of hands that shed innocent blood. Two, I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to get this through your head. Abortion is the killing of an assignment. Here's where I have to park right my tent right here. Here's where I have to make sure you understand. It is the killing of an assignment. Here's what the thing is. In Egypt, Pharaoh got word that there was, some, there was somebody that was coming. And he made a decree because he saw how Israel was prospering, even in bondage. He got threatened of their size. And he said, every male born, I want you to kill him. Every time you see it, the midwife, once they deliver, throw them into the sea. Because there, there was a prophetic word that was out there that someone God was raising up. So what the devil really wants is the killing of children before they can ever come to be what they're going to be because of the threat that they might, they potentially come with. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something. In the same year that Jesus was born, there was a decree that was out there. Oh, my God. And I tell you the truth, Herod wanted him dead. And then the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Joseph, get out of there and send that child to Egypt because there's people, oh my God, there's people after it because Jesus had an assignment on his life. Hallelujah. What if Jesus would have got caught up and nobody warned him? He, there wouldn't have been a savior in the world. Jesus, I'll tell you the truth tonight. You are killing an assignment. You are killing a child that got so grace on his life. You're killing a child that got promise on his life, on his or her life. You got a child that is going to do things and go places that you would only imagine and then take you with them. But you're going to kill an assignment because of your convenience. God didn't birth you in this earth for no reason there is a purpose behind your existence there is an agenda behind your existence there was a plan that God had all along for the oh my God you are born for such a time as this at this moment at this point on stage because God is using you to bring forth his agenda Oh my God, help me in this room tonight. That's why some of you had, comp oh my God, complications, wrestling with the child and all of that stuff is going on. And the reason why, because it's wrestling, because that child got destiny and an assignment on it. All right. So what does, I I'm going to back this up. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to give you Judges chapter 16, verse 17. This is what Samson said to Delilah. When she was asking him about his strength, she said that he told her all his heart and said to her, no, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. Oh, I got to stop there. He says, no razor shall touch my head, for I was a Nazarite in my mother's womb. In other words, what he was saying, I was already set apart in my mother's womb i already had an assignment of what i would be before i even hit this earth before i cried my first tear when i came out of the womb i was already set apart to be a nazarite oh my god and before i came out of my mother's womb i was already set apart to lead a set apart people here at transformation christian fellowship that did not come to conform to this new age jump but came to transform his place jesus the christ you were already born with a purpose you were already born you were already set apart from day one and no matter how far you tried to run, you always kept coming back. Because when there's a call on your life, you cannot escape. You can't get under it. You can't run from it. And so for all of you that's running for it, you might as well accept it. Because it's not going anywhere. You 
you trying to think you slick with God. You can't be slick with God. You'll lose. You're not slicker than the one who's slick. You're not slicker than the, you're not smarter than him. You're, oh my God, let me tell you something. The Bible says that our greatest thought is his lowest thought. And so no matter how smart you think you are, you're not smarter than God. You kill an assignment on God's life. And you know why he has a problem with that? Because, oh God, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I hear the scripture when he says, he said, I done made you a little lower than the angels. Ha! Praise the name of our God. And so how are you going to kill something he may cry, he hand me? Ha! Out of all of the beings in the world, God is the only one who created man. And so how in the world are you going to kill something? He created my God in here tonight. Hallelujah. He said, I made you a little lower than the angels. I made, I thought, oh my God. And the very fact of the matter is, He didn't create angels. He didn't put their hands on, He didn't put His hands on angels. But He put His hands on us. And not only did He put His hands on us, but then He breathed in you the breath of life. But you want to abort it. Huh. Let me tell you something to that mother who committed abortion and you're feeling sorry about it. Listen, there's grace for you. You're not going to hell. You're not going to hell. Let me tell you something. The Bible says if you confess your sin, he's willing to forgive you. He'll cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He'll cleanse you from that state. He'll dust that stuff off. Matter of fact, he'll put it in the sea of unforgive, uh, 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 forgiveness and he will not, oh my God, bring that back up to you. And that's what you can't allow the enemy, now that you saved, now that you've given your life to Christ, to bring it back up. Because in God's mind, it never happened. And guess what? You need to understand that it never happened and you need to move on from it. And guess what? You, oh my God, his hands are not too short, but his hands are long enough to get you to where you are. You made a bad mistake. You made a mistake off of your own. Oh my God, of your own nature. But God is coming to deliver and redeem you from that. And that is the reality of what we have. The kid has an assignment. And you cannot abort someone because of convenience. What if Mary would have said, God, you inconvenience me? What would Mary have said if, oh, God, you inconvenience me? I can't have Jesus. And she decided to do things to abort the child. To that girl committing, contemplating that. Contemplating abortion. Don't allow the peer pressure. Don't give in to it. If I could just tell you, hear the voice of God. Speak, speak. Let me tell you something. Yeah, yeah, you made a bad, yes, the moment, yes, you had a moment of lack of judgment. But don't abort that baby. I don't care what the father's saying to you. I don't care what your parents are saying to you. Don't abort that baby for your That's own right. convenience or theirs. That's right. You step up to the plate and God will give you the courage. God will give you the help. Because if that child, for all the aborted babies, if they could speak, they said, let me, let me live. Let me live. Every child, they, he can't, he's an innocent, he or she is an innocent because you know why they can't speak for themselves. If he will only let me live, I can contribute. I could do something. If you give me a chance. But we so caught up in our agendas. I'm not telling you abortion is wrong because oh, we are Christians. No, I'm telling you why it's wrong. Why God sees it as wrong. That's something he made. And can I be totally honest with you? Can I be very honest with the whole the argument with yeah. women's rights and all that stuff like that? Here's the thing. Out of all of it, your body was made to carry.
your body was made to carry. You can't get inconvenience something that that was what your body was made for. That's where it gets clouded because you don't believe in God. No, scientifically, God distinguished both man and the woman. The man carries the seed, the woman carries the seed. So the reality is, is that you, your right is to carry. Because that's what God created you to do. And that does not make you below a man. Because you have a grace on you that man can't have. And woman has a grace on them that man can't have. And so a man is not greater than a woman. Both of y'all are equal. But if you don't see it in that way, because of what society is saying, then you miss the boat. All because you're worried about your convenience. Stand to your feet. Listen here tonight, abortion is a serious issue, mental illness is a serious issue. We're coming to address these things. I want you to have a passion for it. Don't take my word. I laid the fact, I laid out the word of God. And I didn't just lay it out the word of God and told you, you didn't know. I, I gave you statistics. I gave you thoughts. I gave it from a scientific, uh, biological point of view. At the end of the day, rape is wrong. Incest and molestation is wrong. And it's demonic. And you didn't deserve that. But let me tell you something now. We cannot allow those issues to then muddy the bigger thing. Because the majority of the reason why abortions exist is because of convenience. Because your baby's not turning out right, you're going to abort it because it has deformities. But you want to talk about, uh, uh, you want to talk about human rights for all. But then you segregating, uh, the, the, but then there's, then, then you are segregating a kid that yeah he may not have the same functions, but yet you want to abort it because oh, he has deformities. But yet you still want equal rights. But yet you segregating a kid of your own. But then, but then we want to have kids, kids but be in the same sex, sex and think that you deserve that when you go against the order of God. Because, because you gave up your right to carry. Because you need a seed to carry. <laughs> and you have to ask friends, can, can, you, can you give me a kid? Can you help me? Because you've given up that right. But you want that right. I'm just being honest with you tonight. We, we got to stand for something or we'll fall for everything. Listen here. All of us are loving people in this room. All of us got friends who've even done abortion, who've committed abortions. I'm not looking down at you tonight. That's not my job. I'm not here to look down at you. I'm here. Let's come on. Let's come to freedom. So that you don't do that again. You want to know what the real heart of, uh, of, of abortion is? What the root of the issue is? Abortion is only a byproduct of the sin of sexual immorality. So again, it's only a byproduct. Because the real root of the issue is sexual immorality. So that's the real thing, man. We, we, we can't do this anymore. I'm tired of seeing innocent lives. Don't have a chance to speak for themselves. But you want somebody to speak for you, but you can't speak for that child. Because you're so worried about, oh, man, is not going to tell me what to do with my girl. Come on, man. Come on. Get a grip. That has nothing to do. That's a human being. This is not a woman's right issue, a man. It's a humanity. It's humanity. It's humane. Murder is inhumane. You premeditated that. You made a decision today. It's going to be a death. I'm killing somebody. And unfortunately, the baby gets killed because of your convenience.
Right now, pray for those who may be contemplating suicide tonight. We, I mean, excuse me, contemplating abortion tonight. Pray for them. Pray for that woman. Pray for that woman who's contemplating that tonight. May they let that baby live today. May that baby live. May they make the right decision tonight. In the name of Jesus the Christ. In the name of Jesus the Christ. We pray over that person's mind tonight. That you would give them the peace of God. Let them know that it's going to be all right. Let them know it's going to be okay. May them make the right decision if they don't want to give it up for the give it up for somebody to treat that baby that wants one. Come on, we want that. Come on, Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we intercede for that woman today. We intercede for them that God, you are with them. You God, you comfort them right now. In the name of Jesus, we don't know who they are, but you know who they are, God. We pray for them right now. No more innocent blood today in the name of Jesus. Oh, no more innocent blood in the name of Jesus. No more innocent blood. No more innocent blood today in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you be with them, Lord. You send the Holy Spirit to them and comfort them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do it right now, Lord. And I pray right now, shut up the mouths of people that are around them, that's trying to convince them to do abort those kids. The devil is a liar. They shall live and declare the works of the Lord today. They shall be great blessings in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church, pray a little harder right there. Intercede for the innocent today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we love you, God, tonight. We love you, God, tonight. We give you glory. We give you glory tonight. We give you glory tonight. Hallelujah, we give you glory tonight. We give you glory, God, because, God, you never lost a case. And we pray right now, the right decision is being made. The right decision is being made. Let them know they're not by themselves tonight. They're not in this alone today. Even if they feel alone, then there's a people praying for them. There's somebody God is going to send to them to be, oh my God, to be a helper to them. In the name of Jesus the Christ. We say, devil, lose that mind tonight. We say, loose that mind tonight. We say, loose that mind in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we declare full control. Full control. Full control tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 If you're not saved, I offer you Jesus tonight. I feel good in this room. I feel good. I offer you Jesus tonight. He'll save you. He'll save you. He came to save you. He came to give you eternal life tonight. Hallelujah. You give your life to him today. In the name of Jesus. If you, oh my God, if you've fallen away from God, you can rededicate your life back to him today. That's available to you as well. Hallelujah. If you want to become a partner of TCF, that's available for you as well. Come on, I come on, give a thunderous crazy praise to God tonight. Come on, give a thunderous crazy praise to God tonight. We thank you for the victory 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 tonight. Hallelujah. We thank